I'm sorry, I think my phone's on loud. Very professional. Who, who is it, Ames? It's an unknown number. No, oh. they... It's probably one of those... Um, good day, you have been qualified won. for yeah. a loan from fucking this oak. Yeah, yeah. And Nigeria... That's what I was needing right now, another oh. loan. Sorry. I didn't use all mine, he used all of his. What's the... Uh, yeah. Oh, we're not allowed to use swear words? No, oh, we are. <laughs> Oh, I got scolded last night. Did you get scolded last night already? <gasps> Mama Amy was out, eh? The more I'm like, calm down this way, the more he laughs, and the more excited he gets. The more yeah, he gets yeah. It, so it's, that's it was quite funny though, yes. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Storytime in the Sofa Work studio. We are here with two people that we have been waiting a really long time to kind of pull this all together and have them in to have a chat. We are here with Stephen Kitsoff and Malcolm Marx. Guys, thank you so much for coming in. This is sick. Yeah, uh, no, thanks yeah. for having us. Yes. Yeah. I think this is the heaviest this room has ever been. <laughs> yeah. This is a great brand for Sofa Works. This couch is holding like 400 plus kilos right now. So we solid on branding for that. Um, yeah, thank you for coming in with your new beer. Bomb Squad Lager. Your mom loves Bomb Squad. This is a incredible brand. You guys have had the most, uh, most amazing rollouts in Winchester, uh, Hamilton's Rugby Club, Village, now Staley's. Let's go straight into why Lager? How did this all come to be? Obviously off the back of your guys' friendship. Mm. Yeah, so I think the whole story probably started a couple of years ago. So myself and Malky try to talk about what can we possibly do outside of rugby? Like what can we do to actually with the friendship and I mean there was a million things thrown around ideas but it, yeah. I think when it came to beer like we're both passionate about rugby friendship beer like the whole thing the story around it um, we just decided to make a beer and it was like two three years ago never actually yeah, yeah. really something came from it um, and then just earlier this year we just like okay this is the year we're gonna do it yeah. we're gonna roll it out before the for the international season starts yeah. um, get some product out there get the brand going um, and yeah, it's been, a, I think, the first day we started talking to someone about producing yeah. a beer. It was the 14th of March. Uh, a month yeah, later, we had our first, first uh, prototype out. And yeah, it's just been rolling smooth sailing from there. Yeah. Heaps of ideas came, obviously, when we roomed <laughs> together, obviously. So heaps of ideas came and obviously under the influence of alcohol. And of course. <laughs> you'd never remember them the next day. So yeah, this is actually probably the first one that we actually spoke about it and actually got going it took us a while we were obviously nervous about it but it, like it's unbelievable yeah. it's really, really yeah. good it's been a it's, it's 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 also such a, a competitive market within south africa in that it's actually really small i mean you've got sab who have like a handful of beers and then like maybe the introduction of like budweiser was like the latest kind of new thing we had to beer but beer up until now with you guys doing something like this that's so exciting was kind of dead in the water Everyone was, you know, there's a new gin, or there's a new tequila trend, or there's a fucking vodka trend, or there's a salsa trend. And moving into beer is so exciting, and we were actually chatting about it, saying the coolest part about this is that I believe the reason the brand stands so strong is that you've got two faces to the brand. When there's a face to a brand, and people can invest in you guys, which the whole country has for the past how many years of playing rugby, people invest into what it is that you do. And we all know how much you love beer so you know it's not a bullshit scheme this is you guys probably sitting in a room drinking a lot of beers being like this is good this is bad how did you guys kind of start to narrow down into this is the taste it has to be a lager why not anything else just yet yeah i think uh, down the line we'll probably start looking into different maybe ipa or a or a stout uh, but i think for just the beginning like the the major population beer drinkers in South Africa all enjoy a lager and it's easy drinking, it's light, it's yeah. smooth, uh, the color looks nice. So we didn't want something too fruity. We wanted something to compete with the, with the mass produced beers like a, like a SAB for instance. Yeah. Um, so something that's craft, easy for us to, to get our hands on, but can still hold its weight against a, yeah. a, a major brand like yeah. SAB for instance. But yeah, it's just, it, I think the craft industry in South Africa, and especially in Cape Town, if you, if you start looking around, there's more and more like Jack Black and those are popping up and we saw an opportunity. So we want to almost get into that space, um, try and get like a nice strong hold in South Africa and then from there just, just build, 
pull the brand and, and expand as, as, we, as time goes by. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking as well, with you guys playing, obviously now with your move to Ulster overseas and playing club overseas, but still remaining in, you know, playing for South Africa, obviously, same with yourself. Um, how do you pronounce the Kubota? Kubota, Kubota. So, so a lot of, it's, it's different for you. So foreigners, it's Kubota. And Japanese people, it's Kubota. 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 Or, uh, yeah. <laughs> Kubota. That was really good. He's been practicing saying that. Nailed it. Uh, no, it's yeah, Japanese. It's not the easiest language in the world. But so it's, yeah, it's hectic, but it's, yeah, it's fun. And do you, do you see that side of the world, the same kind of trend in beer? Is that a popular kind of go-to around sport? Yeah, I think they more lagers like like it says most of most of South Africans love love a, yeah. a lager and yeah. and especially with rugby and stuff. But their their major sports aren't necessarily the same as ours. So they are baseball and say soccer for example. Okay. But like went to a baseball game and people are drinking beers as well. And most of them are lagers. Yeah. I actually don't know if I've seen um, a craft beer or or anything of that sort of. Yeah. Or stuff like it, it's more lagers and stuff like that that they have there. Okay. Um, actually, Sam could see a picture of obviously looking at like color schemes and all of that mm. um, of some of the cool stuff that they've done there with the, with their beers. So it's different, but it's yeah, I think it's something that will work. Um, mm. But yeah, they um, they they're yeah. more lager people, I think. Eh? Yeah. They yeah. you don't really see IPAs and, and craft beers on tap in restaurants. It's more acai. Um, what's the other one, Kiran or okay. um, Sapporo. Sapporo. Hmm. Okay. So are they many lager drinkers, I think. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and I think also with the, um, especially with the, from Malki's side, like being in Japan, seeing like the cool designs and it also helped with our design and thing, yeah. thought process because, yeah. I mean, we took a wide turn from, from almost going the tradi traditional green and gold to, to actually where we ended up being. So there was like a lot of inspiration from outside, from friends like Reg and Pini from Village. Yeah. The creative side came through first and Malky sending info from Japan, what he liked from that side. So that's all that got taken into consideration, actually trying to come up with the, the label we we both uh, resonate with and enjoy. So there's so much information and stuff going in and we were like, we don't want to get in trouble with the box. We don't yeah. want to step on anyone's toes. We yeah. want to create a product that can actually stand the test of time, yeah. not just be a gimmicky thing, but yeah. um, so trying to put all that into just designing the label um, was kind of important. So we got a bit of the Japanese color scheme and, and simplicity of the beer, yeah. plus the bomb squad and the, so the green with the, with the white and the, and the fresh. Jeez, that's, that's, I'm, I'm so keen. I mean, we were literally saying before getting on, wrapping up the can and wrapping up the design that this already is a solid can, like, I'd yeah. pick this off a shelf. I mean, obviously you've got to put your like alcohols, you know, alcohol is what it is. These are the ingredients kind of thing. Um, but this is awesome. So I'll shut up and I'll drink one. Ems, what's that, that one saying, like, uh, the Afrikaans version says, as you drink and you stop on your pot, mach you frack. It's actually such cool things you can, you can put on the mm. can and you can design it quite nicely. So uh, yeah, the warnings have to be there. It's, it's mm. cool, but uh, yeah, you can be creative with it. Oh, that's good. Yeah, Coffee on the cans are going to be something fun. Yeah. Got an amazing little sorting that out as well. It's going to be really cool. Sick. Yeah. Well, cheers cool. to you guys. Yeah, cheers to Bomb Squad. Thank you for coming in. This is awesome. Yeah. Tom, cheers. Amy, cheers. I'm sure you played a massive part in pulling this off as well. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to you. <laughs> I think she's the brains in this whole organization. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she does all the work. Yeah, you guys say, we just, we just taste and yeah. see, okay, are we like this? We uh, sample products. <laughs> <laughs> and she does the work. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I remember we did, we did the, I think you were still overseas at the time when you did the taste testing at Village. Yes, that already, you had so many people in that room, everyone smiling, drinking the beer already. And yeah, hats off, not to just sound like I'm trying to blow smoke, but you guys literally found a beer that's light enough to drink as many as I want, but heavy enough to still give me that like deep lager taste. And you've balanced it perfectly. So shout out to you guys. That's what I picked up on the day that was spot on. So this is a massive shout out to Saggy. Saggy as well. Saggy and the guys, they, they, they are brewers. So, I mean, they, they created a recipe for us and they, I mean, chuffed from the, even like when I went 
a couple of weeks ago, tried it, tried it out of the tank for the first time. Um, they've nailed it spot on from the beginning. Yeah. So, no, I'm very proud of, of the product they actually created in partnership with the brand. So, very chuffed. Yeah, yeah. It's actually Sweet. crazy how they got it right. Like, I mean, mm. we gave a reference and then mm. it's actually off, first batch is... Yeah, our beard design actually came over a Zoom call. Like, we were... Really? I was, I was in Ireland at that time. Malk is in Japan. It was like what, 11 o'clock at night in the East time. Yeah. And we're actually sitting on Zoom and like Adrian from Saggy is like, guys, what, what do you want your beer? Like we can go super crafty yeah. or we can go like super commercial, but they, we need to find a balance. And we just literally spoke to like what we like, what we want to see in a beer, the color we want to see. Um, and they just come up with a recipe and nailed it yeah. from the beginning. So. Ran from there. Yeah. And we interrupt this episode to thank our sponsor, Truth Coffee Roasting. Truth Coffee Roasting have put the effort in to source beans from around the world to bring you exclusive, high, premium coffee flavors that are not just a caffeine fix. They keep me going, they keep the team at Storytime going, and now they can keep you going too. Use your exclusive Storytime code and get 10% off all premium coffees. Thank you, Truth. This episode of Storytime is brought to you by Frankie's Underwear, because life is too short to wear boring ass underwear. If you use code Frankly's Matching, get 20% off all of their full priced items. Plus, if you sign up for their newsletter at their website, get a further 15% off as well. That's a total of 35% off everything. Thank you, Frankly's. If, 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 if you had to give it like a, how many till I'm lack on a level, how many of these have you, have you practiced like on a scale of one to 10? Is this like a three beer lack a night? Or is this like the problem with Bomb Squad actually is, is how easy drinkable it is. Like yeah. it is, it doesn't gas you up, it doesn't make you bloated. Um, so to be honest, like I think you can drink quickly and a lot, yeah. but then there's like a delayed effect. Like you, all of no, a sudden really. you're a bit, all of a sudden, yeah, yeah you're a bit, shoulders a bit loose. Yeah, you gotta buy the jiggle, yeah. But, uh, no, I think it's easy if you're a big beer drinker, you can easy smash 10 of these, 10 drafts. It's very nice, like it's, and I, I warned Malky, like, when I started drinking it for the yeah. first time, I told him, like, listen, you can, you can drink a lot of Castle Light, to be honest, like, he can maybe yeah. drink a case, but yeah. I said, you easily smash on a warm day, like, a case of, like, 500 mils of bombs. There you go. And have you put no, it to I the did, test? Yeah, I tried last a little night. bit last night, <laughs> and it was, no, it, it, like, obviously you think, okay, um, maybe for, for him, he can do that, because yeah. he can also drink a lot, so. Yeah. Um, and then actually just drinking it last night, I was like, shit, like it's hectic. You can actually sink a good yeah. couple of these things. And <laughs> like there is a bit of a delayed effect, I think, as well. Like, I mean, <laughs> they taste so good. And so like you're trying to drink as much of it as you can in the period that you're there for. Yeah. But then, um, yeah, it's just, um, yeah, I think, I think Sagan and them got it spot on. It. They really did. It's so easy to drink. It's not, it's not heavy. I don't, I, I don't know. I could see, we, we spoke about this. Like, if you have like a heavy lager, mm. you have one or two and you have a meal, you're sort of full and you don't want to sort of drink beer anymore or whatever. So yeah. our thing was, yeah. you want to be able to have two or three, have a meal and then smash 10 afterwards as well. Yeah, yeah kind of take it throughout yes. the day, yeah. pre-drink, while you bry, after yeah. dinner, kind of last little, What's it like a nightcap? There we go at the end of the night as well. Sick man, shout out to you guys, well done. I remember when we, when, when we came into the tasting, I was supposed to show up at the tasting and I said to Jess on the phone, I was like, I'm gonna show up at the tasting, I'm gonna sip, I'm, I, I'm just here to taste. Just gonna... It's a tasting. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna go to gym, right? I still have to go to the gym. I, that. I think I had like three or four drafts and I walked in the gym, I was like, hey, it's gym today. Literally, <laughs> I went and sat in the sauna for like 20 minutes and it was just full of dudes. And I'm sitting there like trying to focus, like sweat out the beer and everyone's like, yes, this dude, you're looking rough. Like what went on? I was like, no, I was at a beer tasting. And like beer tasting for what? I said, no, for Bomb Squad. And everyone, everyone in the sauna is like, so where can we get our hands on it? Like, it looks like you had a good time, dude. So that was, that was really lucky to get to taste it out. So dude, I'm stoked. I'm a huge beer fan. Um, I'm fully in. So we actually want to do, before we get into it, we actually want to do a little bit of a challenge with you guys in terms of the beer. We really want to chat a bit on your friendship and how you guys started developing this friendship of being mates. I sent a, a, a question to a friend of mine who's a huge rugby fan, Anthony Skoltz. I sent a message to him and said like, 
what would you ask the guys? And his first question was, in terms of the position you guys play on the field, it's not as interactive as some other positions would be in terms of being right next to each other, kind of. How did that field positioning and the positions you guys play then off the field transition into now we like best mates and you guys have now built this friendship that is actually becoming a known thing away from the rugby field as well. Yeah, I think probably uh, position wise, so we actually work like when it comes to scrum time, lineouts, we work together all, all the time. Like mm. our positions are so close that we, we scrum, we need each other's back. Um, on the field, like we do similar roles, like we both got like a defensive breakdown mindset. So we go for purchase. We talk about it the whole time. We talk about the scrums. We talk about the way we want to play and but we play similar styles. Um, so that's a big thing. So we spend a lot of time in the boardroom like on the field and in the yeah, boardroom yeah. together. So then we became roommates and from there we just we started doing everything together. Yeah. Um, I feel bad for my wife. She, she, when she comes on tour, she's always the third wheel between myself and Melky. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it, the friendship just blossomed from there, I think. And, and we enjoy a good time. Funny and enjoy. story for you as well. The first time <laughs> I met Kitsi. Um, I... How old was I then? Kitsi, like nine, 19 18. or 20. Um, Jeez. And I just, obviously he had played Super Rugby f like straight out of school. So like you see this, I was still in school when he, when he made his debut and stuff. So I was like obviously watching this young guy play and all of that. And yeah. like eventually I played um, one or two games for the Lions in Super Rugby and it was against the Stormers here. Where did we, when, where did we go in? It was like the old uh, bag, bag that. Oh. Uh, what, in, Long Street. in Long Street. Yeah. Long Street. Wow. Yeah, it's now the top spot, but like it was always that was little that dodgy the there, yeah. shisha place. Yes. Yes. And this poor guy came out. The, all the Ames. all the jewels are there. Yeah, yeah. He came out with Ames, and I was there with Julian uh, Redling Ace and Fuff, and so we're sitting there having a few beers, and um, eventually Amy and them just got up and left because I was like practically interviewing the side. <laughs> really? Like, oh, so how did you feel? Yeah, and what did you do? Yeah. Like proper fan, like almost like fanboying it, and I like yeah. when I actually remembered it. Amy reminded me when we actually became like mates and all of that sort of stuff. I was like, I, I felt so embarrassed. I was like, I was like probably thought, who is this little shit? <laughs> like, I mean, I'm just trying to be out, have a couple of beers, you know, yeah. relax, and I'm now I'm getting like a full blown interview away from rugby as well yeah, from this random little shit. So yeah, yeah it was um, it was crazy. Obviously, from there, obviously, and I actually met him and spent time with him and stuff. It's, yeah. You know. Kind of blossomed from there. So went yeah. from fanboy to best friend. Yes, yeah. Obviously. That's everyone's dream, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he was sort of like, I mean, seeing him play like straight out of school and all of that, like, I mean, mm. it was impressive. And obviously I was just so young at that stage. Obviously ask him how he did. And obviously they yeah. won the under 20 yeah. World Cup as we'll see yes. in that. Um, so yeah, I don't know, I just had heaps of questions and obviously I was intoxicated, so I didn't <laughs> shut up. Yeah, question, 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 question. Yeah. Give this like a break to go <laughs> spend time with his wife who he was there with. Yeah, so. Uh, Amy is just like off the half an hour, 45 minutes, you just got walked. up and left. left yeah. I had enough of this. No, I was yeah. with Puff. I was like, Puff, let's just go. Were you, were you already like Mama Amy at that stage? No, not really. We were young. We were like 22. Yes, we were you were 19. Jeez, like. Yeah, 21, yeah. So this is long ago. This is yes, 10 years ago. To now having been grouped no, in each other's weddings. Yeah, no, and she's starting your own. That's like every, every like best friend dream to like start a beer together. Exactly. Like that, th this is the goal in life. <laughs> you play international rugby for your country and then you start a beer. Like. That is so sick. They need to make a documentary. We're going to talk about it. We're going we're gonna to shoot a documentary. That's going to be our next plan. After we'll do story time. We'll keep story time going. We start a documentary about these two oaks. And we just drink beer the whole documentary. Yeah. And say what we want. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That'll be the outcome. But it must be like after our retirement. Like. Okay. Yeah, 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 we can't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, after retirement. Yeah, there's a lot of secrets. What does a documentary look like if you drink beer every day on set? Yeah. A little bit shaky, cameras upside down. Should have yeah. shaky at the moment. Yeah. I just took a sip and I was like, oof. 
Yeah. You just try. Kind of gets into the bone. Try to see what soccer team you want to take over. Mm. <laughs> Dude, I'm in. Let's do it. <laughs> I'll be there. Our mascot, you guys buy it. We sponsor everything with Just Bomb Squad. The players walk on the field holding cans. They yeah. have to down a beer before they yeah. play. There we go. Everyone's got to take a knee. Chug. Play. Yeah. It's the wine, wine and beer league. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> we actually have a few questions. We'll do a speed round of a couple of questions. And that's in there. I want to find out how many rugby games in your guys' life you think you've played hungover. No. I can answer that. Zero. Really? Never ever? That's really impressive. No, I haven't no, played a game I've, yeah, I've, I've never, not even like when it's a late call up, I've, I've always tried to be like quite serious when it comes to like the, yeah. the prep on a Friday and a Saturday before the game. Like I've had a couple of beers before a game, but not, not, yeah, to, not, to, the, not to the point where I'm tipsy or drunk. So I've, yeah. always, I've always said like anything can happen. I need to play 80 minutes and I need to be as fresh as I can be. So yeah. I might have two beers, but that's about it. <laughs> we want to do quickly before we get into a bit of a tasting test we just want to gift you guys things quickly so firstly from truth coffee it is a unique <clears throat> colombia blend of coffee that they actually found at the london coffee week it's like a festival they have out that side where everyone brings all the best coffees in and they literally drove here this morning to bring this to you guys by hand to be like please try it see how you feel it's not there's no alcohol in it but if you have this in the morning, and then immediately after you have a bomb squad, then your day is kitted. Yeah. So they set you guys up yeah, both with, you, with, really with one of them. Um, it's really good coffee. Um, yeah, shout out to them. Thank you, Truth Coffee. You guys are amazing. So Awesome, thank you very much. Truth. Even yeah. enjoy that. And then, geez, like we've got like Christmas going on here. <laughs> this would be sick. Imagine every episode, they're like, Josh, here's gifts for you. Nah. Um, another gift from Frankly's. Frankly's have sent you guys vouchers go buy whatever underwear buy matching you can match with your wives and then you can do like a liquor you know like leopard print vibe you know and you guys can do your thing when you celebrate another launch of bomb squad so yeah go match obviously you guys know frankly's it's been around for a while we know local brand incredible brand local's quality. liquor so shout out to you guys as well there's vouchers for you and then lastly from sofa works as well they've also told you guys before um they've kitted you guys out uh, they got you sorted for the side um and also to kit out families and stuff like that as well so you guys are sorted from all of our sponsors thank you thanks guys thank you thank you very much to get that in there. <laughs> um let's do the beer tasting so we set you guys up here am i correct in saying that your nickname is moose yes Jeez, you know, you know how stressed I was about that. I wow. still messaged Amy and I was like, please tell me his nickname is Moose. Because yeah, yeah, we were getting t-shirts and stuff made and we were going to do Spicy Plum and Moose. And that oh, was going to yeah. be like the t-shirts for it, which will still get done. But I'll talk to you guys about that later. But I was like, okay, hey, so I wrote Moose. Perfect. Yeah. So there's your Moose cup. Then obviously Kitsy has to be Spicy Plum. Thank you. So we got you kitted, and then I'll just be Josh because I'm a doos and I don't play for <laughs> I don't play for the Springbok, so I don't get a nickname. Beer taste test. The point of this is six, seven beers. We don't know what beer it is. It's gonna take a swig, see if it's Bomb Squad, call out if it is or isn't, and see if we can get this right. So we've got Josh, Moose, and Spicy Plum. Cheers. First beer. Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. This one was easy peasy. Yeah. Come on. That was easy. I don't know what that was. I know what it was. It was light. I know what it is, yeah. That one was easy though. Um, beer questions while we add it. What would you rate is your number one beer moment like you get the shower beer you get the after game beer you get the airport beer you get the breakfast beer what is your number one beer moment yeah, <laughs> yeah go I'll go, I'll go first. Uh, i think mine is uh after the final whistle like that that first beer you have after okay. again the ice cold in changing room in changing room the first one you crack open which will now probably be bomb squads that you drink immediately after as well so there you go yeah. I would say I've got two or three. Uh, let's do yeah. it. So after the game, exactly the same. Normally just go to the fridge, grab a beer, sit down a little bit, relax, obviously. Yeah. 
have a nice cold one. Um, I get way too excited about golf as well. Oh, golf. Are you guys both in golf? Because I know Stephen's huge on golf. I love golf. Yeah. So get to the golf course, that first draft after the round. Mm. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you hung over oh. and you go for lunch or you go for breakfast somewhere, the razor Just blade, yeah. That one that goes down like razor blades, but then it <laughs> gets you back your... to normality a little bit. <laughs> Elevate your mood again, yeah. Yeah, it gets you back to feeling who you are, yeah. Yeah, so those are my three, but I'd, I'd probably say my favorite is like, as you said, after a game. After a game. Yeah, like, yeah, you just... Also, beer helps with hydration. Like if, what uh, the, uh, Adrian from Saggy told us a story, in the 1900s, they were brewing beer, but like at a very low um, alcohol percentage, yeah. and people prefer drinking beer to water because they didn't get sick. Yeah. No way. Beer, they boil the water, so it cleans. So no beer was ways. healthier than water, and people didn't get sick. They didn't get was all the diseases. But anyway, like yeah, it was actually the cheese. Like I had no idea that that was even a thing. Yeah, people drank beer more often than they drank water because it was safer. Mm. Well, there you go. We shouldn't change that rule. No, I think it must be a life rule. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, don't fix what isn't broken. Don't judge me if I have a beer at breakfast. There we go. See, these are actually, actually even ha haven't even had breakfast. These are breakfast beers. Okay, this is beer number two. Yep. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I was about to say, just now I drink out of a spicy plum cup, imagine. COVID. I don't like this beer. Really? What it? No, tell me at the end. Do you remember which one is which? Yeah, yeah. No, man. I know, I know this taste, though. Mm. I know this taste. But it's, it's not Bomb Squad. It's definitely no, it's not not. Bomb Squad. No, this is definitely not Bomb Squad, but this is... The first one was more lacquer than this one. Mm. I know what the first one was. Yeah. I'm not going to mention it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. what the first one was. I'm like on the... I think I know what both of them are. There's there's a beer that you drink yeah. that I don't like. Yeah. Is it that one? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I called it, eh? Yeah. You're really on you. Um, next beer question. What is worse, a flat beer or a warm beer? Um, warm beer. Warm beer tends to become more bitter. Yeah. Um, flat beer you can handle. I can handle a flat beer. I don't mind it. I love Guinness. Guinness is a... Like, and, and that's quite yeah. like a flat and heavy, but uh, warm beers is the worst for me. Worse? I would agree, warm air. Yeah. Cold, like on a hot day, would you rather drink a flat one that's cold or a warm one that's got bubbles? Go for the, go for the cold, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll be the same now. Yeah. If you get a beer and the beer's flat, are you like, screw it, chug it? Just or chug it. Chug it. Chug it. Chug it. Chug it. It's easy chug. One. <laughs> Easy chug. Oh, there you go. It's easier to chug when it's eventually, flat. Eventually you'll get one that's got bubbles. So yeah. even if the next one comes yeah. like flat, you chug that <laughs> one as well. You tell, you tell them, like, listen, it must be like bottom keg. So chug the last bit of, out of the keg and then just put a new keg on. Okay. So you're just trying to hit the bottom of the keg yeah, so to get to the next one. Yeah. Okay. And okay. someone has to do it. Someone has to stand, fill that role. Someone's got to be that person. Yeah, exactly. Oh, there you go. We'll be those guys. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, carry the burden for everyone. 100%. Make it nice for everyone else. Okay, this is... Okay. Nummer drie. Yeah. Look at me bringing out the Afrikaans. Yeah, you can Oh, tell it. wait. It. Easy peasy, definitely not bomb squad, but I know what this is. Yeah, I know what this is. Also a nice hangover cure, this one. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is, this is a... It's not razor blades, this one. No. This is like, this is you can have a couple of these and only realize you've had a couple the next day. Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly what this is. Very nice on a mm. on a very hot day. Oh, very good. This is like a it's like a vibey beer, you know. This isn't like a sit with the money and drink a beer. This is like a little vibey. This is what Canaan drinks. Oh really? Mhm. Mm yeah. Thank you. Sweet, that one was easy. Um, what is your? Oh, how do I word this? So I know what my beer limit is. I know that it's going to take me four drafts and I'm lekker. And I can float at four. 
I can kind of five, six, seven is still number four, you know, because you're at that vibe, you know. What is your vibe level? Because I know you have a hella tolerance for drinking. I mean, you're very good at it. <laughs> I don't want to brag about it, but yeah. He, <laughs> the limit is like if I just go to a restaurant, I want to drink till I'm like like a vibey. It'll yeah. probably be six drops. Six. Okay. Yeah, I think you're a bit more than me, Kitty. I would say, like you said, like depends if you've had a rough day and you just want to sit down and have a beer or two. Yeah. But I'd say probably four or five, and then I'll start feeling. And then you. Okay. Yeah, but four or five lacquer ones as well. Like, oh, you need like Gewohne. Proper oak. Yeah. Big yeah. lot. Not flat, ice cold. Doesn't matter, flat, warm, anything. If it's a rough day. Yeah. <laughs> if you've had a cock day, it's a cock day. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, four or five, I'd say. Um, but yeah, like Kitty says, sometimes it takes a bit longer, sometimes it takes a, but I'd say on average maybe four or five. Four or five as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we all... So Kitsy drinks you under the table? Most of the time, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Most it's of the time. Big, Big man, you got to carry it. you got to carry that burden for everyone. That's when the chat start. When oh, you both yes. are safe there and you're sitting there. Oh, what are we going to do? It's all over the place. We're going to start another business. Let's do it. How many, how many ideas do you reckon we've come up with? No, in our drunk jets? hundreds. So it's number four, eh? It's number, number four. four. Yeah. 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 Let me smell it. Hang on. Yeah, this is the one. This is us. 100%. How many we sound pressed if I, I can I get the truck? I really thought I wouldn't be able to smell it. Yeah, smell the difference. Smell the difference, but you can smell this is. A cheat. That is ours. Yeah. That's this one. Number That's four. this one. I don't, I, don't, I, I don't have the practice that they have. Yeah, yeah number four, yeah. This is us. This, this is you. Okay, four. We're all going to agree. I'm going to go with them because they'll know. Four. Okay? Yeah. Can you maybe bring like a, another sample, number five, just to really know? Yeah, yeah, just to make extra sure, let's, let's, let's sample again and check. I didn't think I'd be able to smell it, but no. Honestly. I thought maybe it's all of them, it's like some of it's yeah, fruity, yeah. some of it's PSB. Yeah. Smelling it, but you can actually smell this one is bomb squad. Yeah, you can smell the fresh yeah, mountain right. water. Super stoked. What happens if it's not smell? What happens if you're wrong? You're going to have to edit. What happens if you're wrong? Cut, cut, the, whole scene cut the whole thing out. <laughs> Take that whole tasting segment out. Yeah. Okay, sick. I'm gonna I'm gonna hop on board with them and say four. Yeah. I also kind of cheated it a bit, but no, you did cheat, but we'll do one more. Yeah, we'll let's do, do let's do another. Um, don't try and trick us with another bomb squad. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, we will know. Yeah, we will know. Um, what to you? So, my dad and I had this thing every Friday. We'd go for beers together. I'd be studying. He'd be working both in town, and every Friday we'd meet up at like whatever our local bar was for that year. And we go for beers together. And our start of the evening was always a draft and a tequila. And you'd get like two, three sips of your draft in, smack your tequila, and then just kind of go for beer after. What is your perfect pairing with a beer? If you had to like have another alcohol that night to kind of fight with the beer a little bit, what is your go-to to kind of fight with it? I want to hear this. Blue. Yours. Yeah, like my... Second choice of alcohol yes. on, on a long night. Um, so I'll probably brandy, like oh, okay. premium, okay. premium and Coke or Coke Zero. Actually, because try and look after my figure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's like when I order a McDonald's, like a Big Mac, I always ask for the Coke Zero because the calories don't count anymore. There you go. So your body's fighting. Uh -huh. But anyway, like it's um, yeah. So I'll probably say brandy, but I'm going Coke. Ready? and a bunch of Jagermeister shots. Oh, you Yagi over tequila? 100%. Really? Okay. I'm okay. forced to drink tequila with my lovely wife. She's a big tequila drinker. I'll be with you on tequila, don't worry. Yeah, I got you there. I'm trying to think now. I don't often drink brandy mm -hmm. with you guys. I stick on beer, mm -hmm. but if I go to something else... No, but yours is easy, the beers. You do something to the beers. Oh. Ah, yes, you're right. Yeah. So, um something called a snake a snake so it's a shot of peppermint liqueur and it has to be a glass shot glass 
Okay. It's, then it sits at the bottom of the glass, and then you pour beer with it. But you pour it. At, what? Some people call it a what, a depth charge or something like that. Yeah, a snake bite. I know it as a snake. So okay. Pour the peppermint liqueur into. It's like bottom. say a bottle of 330 mils. You put it at the bottom, and then you pour that on the side. So it, the alcohol actually doesn't mix. So the shot will stay in there, and then you'll see the beer on the outside. But you can see it, it and you down that thing. You down. You down it. You down the draft. Yes, as cool as you can. And yes. you get that like peppermint liqueur at the end. At the end, and yes. then you burp it as well. And then you burp it as well. I'm in. I've never, I've never had that before. So that's my. But yeah, my wife doesn't like it very much when I do. Plenty <laughs> <laughs> of those. So it's like it's poison. Really? Like it. It's like, like a snake. Like, it's, yeah, like you can drink beers like casual. Like and you, say last night we yeah. had a couple of beers. We were chilled like, and all that. Like you, you know, you become drunk it through the night, or you're coming more jolly through yeah. the night. Yeah. But like with a snake bite, what I've experienced is with a snake, it's you have two of them, like fine, and then half an hour later you're, like, you're paralyzed. Really? Yeah, yeah the poison depends, kicks in. And it depends on how, ma how many you do. So like you could... Like a three putt, if you have two three putts. Yeah, then you have one of them and stuff like that. But like say just a normal jaw, if you go to some for bra or you at somewhere and, or pub or something and you have, if you're having beers and then you do two or three of those, I promise you the next day you'll feel might have a bit of tipex as well. Oh, really? Because of the shot of... A cute man. That was my deal. I said I wasn't going to start my speech until she had a snake. Had a snake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then I made a little one, like a little whiskey glass and a little shot. Oh, sweet, man. Yeah. So, yeah, I did that. Actually, did, I can't believe I did that to a show, man. Oh, you see yeah, what, <laughs> what you guys put your wives through? I mean... We're very lucky Jess isn't sitting here because she'd be like, uh, what they put their wives through, uh, yeah. Thank you, baby. Okay, let's do it. One more. So this is like our cherry yeah. on top to make sure we write or that they write. I haven't smelled this. You don't smell this often in South Africa, to be honest. I know this beer. It's a tougher one. No, I know this, but I don't. My glass still smells like bomb squad though. Smell? It's very American. Am I right? Is he right on that? I don't know what this is. I genuinely... No, man, this is... Really? Is it I feel like this is super popular. Not local. No. It's not local. I think it is correct. Oh, then I know. What, then I know what you're talking about. What? If if Kitsi's correct, then I know what he's talking it's about. Local, if it's American. Is there controversy around this beer at the moment? Yes, I, I'm thinking of the same one. Is there? Because I'm I'm on that same page as well. Okay, sick, nailed it. Okay, we didn't say it though. Okay, I'll give my I'll give my uh, I'll give my. Cool. Prediction without saying names. So we're going to stick at number four being Bomb Squad. The first one is a very popular light beer. Okay, that's my prediction. Do you guys agree on the first one being that? The second one is... Uh, the second one's like a... It's the one that you drink that I don't. Correct. Yeah, uh, I'm right. Correct. It's... um. Uh, shit, how do I give like a hint at that beer? It's the country above us. Uh, yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The third is named after a sport. <laughs> yes. 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 yes, yes, yes. There yes. we go, we yes. got that as well. Yes. The, four, the four was definitely Bomb Squad. Yeah. And then the last one mm. is the like proper South African Gewoene beer. No. 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 I know it's, it's uh, American beer. It's American. Oh, the Amer okay, that was the controversy one. So, are you guys the same prediction? Yeah, yeah. exactly so. How many are we right on? 100%, yeah, that's all correct. On all of them? Correct, yeah. Yeah. Hey, look at us go. What, what was number two? Just hold it. Was okay. Uh, we'll beep it, don't worry. Yeah. Um, I have. Shit, that was fun. We should do another one of those. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh yeah, we do we have another beer for Malcolm? Yeah. No, I got you, I got you. Are you 
you go? Yeah, I just left him over here while we were tasting. Mm. Oh, but is that a full one? Full one, yeah. Ah, there there we, go. we go. You want a full one? I have this one, yeah. yeah. And this is like... Well, that's actually the right style, like we... So yeah. On, on the song that we wanted to do is like to... You know, like Red Bull, like when they started out, they placed, strategically placed a lot of empty Red Bull cans and dustbins to get the brand out there. So what I was thinking with like labeling these sample cans was to label on this side. So if someone drinks it, at least you can see it. Yeah. <laughs> Just get the, there we go. get the picture of the, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't involved in this one, but. I was you were involved in this one. There we go. No, this oh, you nailed. done correctly. The way that you wanted it. Yeah, this is like a sip and watch. Mm. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Look at my eyes. Mm. Not at my beer. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> go. My eyes are up here. Yeah. My eyes are up here. That should be on the can. That'd be brilliant. Um, so I wrote a couple questions down that I wanted to swing past you guys. There's questions based on rugby and the sport of rugby. There is a fire round question there's a relationship tester, and then there is a best friend tester. Which do you want to hit first? Um, not even father. Okay. I just start at the top. <laughs> what was the moment in your guys' relationship where it clicked to be like, I'm going to be good mates with this oak? Um, yeah, I think, I think our friendship like really kicked off like the first year he joined the Springboks. I think I was a year before you. Mm. Yeah, so I was there at the box. It was really a tough year, like a 2016 um, season. Like the box went through some difficult times, lost a couple of bad games. But um, yeah, so the following year, Malky joined as a replacement. Uh, it was like a third choice hooker, and he got an opportunity to play his debut against the uh, All Blacks. Mm. Yeah, so I think that year is like the year we almost. Okay. Like that 2017. Uh, August when we actually started spending a lot of time together um, it, was, yeah. it was easy for me it was always like Malky was the first guy it was the easiest guy to give a call like let's say I'm gonna go for coffee when I join and he was always like yeah I'm coming I'm coming and that's how our friendship started building from there and beer and beer yeah, so <laughs> mention coffee, but just mention not coffee but so not to show everyone that I'm only drink beer the whole time but like it's yeah, I was the first guy to call, like, let's go for dinner. So, now he comes with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. yeah we, we started spending a lot of time together. I mean, even when Ames was with us in, where were we, um, in Italy, in... What's that? Uh, Venice, I think it was. Mm, Venice. So, I was like, no, we're going to go on, uh, like, a tour thing. And that was in 2017, no? Yeah, 2017. 2017. And I was just with them, like everybody else went on that thing, and I just went with the two of them, and yeah. you know, this. But it's a spending evenings with this oak, and then obviously rooming together, and then him, this oak, trying to bully me half the time, and people's elbow <laughs> in the middle of the night, and all of that sort of stuff. But yeah, it grew, I, I think from 2017 it grew, and obviously spending, like, I think what also helped was, like speaking about beer, like after the game you have a beer or you have a contiki or something like that. Okay. And like I mean, I'm generally quite like I won't just speak. I, I don't just open up like immediately. Mm -hmm. So like obviously once you've had a couple of beers, you tend to talk a little bit more and stuff like that. And then yeah, and then it's mm -hmm. just carried on from there. I think yeah. Uh, yeah. I wanted. I wanted. Uh, it, it's kind of a bit of a sideline question from these I've written down, but. You mentioned like 2016 being a hard year and a question that's always uh, that I've always had in mind is as a as a team can you feel stepping into a season are we on like we on fire and can you feel when something's not clicking because it always I'm, I'm, I'm always very uh, skeptical of the kind of fan that when there's a loss they're like outraged by the fact that this happens and it's a sport, you know? So it's, it's like a game of chess. It's always putting our strategy against yours and trying to one-up each other, right? At the end of the day, in a very physical manner. But can you feel maybe when planning at the beginning of a season, getting ready or the vibe in the changing room, can, can, can you feel when things are on point or when they may be slightly off? Yeah, I think probably the bigger reason, like uh, just to make it more 
understandable to the to the fan as well. Yeah. It's like that 2016 season was a it was a complete change in in personnel, a complete change in management, complete change in in players being selected for the for the Springboks. Um, I mean, 2015 there was like Victor and all those Oaks retired, and then there was like a whole new group of players that that mm -hmm. slotted in. So it's almost trying to find your feet as a as a team. So we went in full confidence, like we like new team, like we're gonna we had an amazing uh, incoming series, um, played well, um, and but as the season progressed or as it went on, like the there's conflict between players, there's conflict between management, like coaching styles differed, um, and they just couldn't find a solution going into that end of year tour. And then 2017 was a bit better. Like the guys almost started gelling again, yeah. um, understood like the, the mistakes we made and found solutions for that from the previous season. So it went a bit better, but it wasn't like a complete box team yet. And then um, credit to, to Rossi and them stepping in 2018, changed the whole picture again. Yeah. And that's where like yeah. the guys started finding confidence in the plan, started understanding what we have to do as a team. Um, and then we really started building momentum and, we could, yeah. and then we could keep that momentum because everyone was on the same page. Yeah. It was a bit different in 2016. It was like different coaching styles. Guys were trying to dominate certain areas. But when we came in 2018, there was like a plan. Everyone was aligned with the plan and they actually built momentum from there. Okay, yeah. No, yeah, he, what he said, <laughs> what he said, perfect. Okay, I see. So, so there's, because there, there, there would be with change in management or change in players, there is a kind of like ebb and flow to the sport, right? Of like things are changing, we need to find our feet again. Oh, we found our groove, now we're really good. Things are changing kind of. Yeah. So is, is, is that an active thought of like, hey guys, in eight years time, things change again? Like do, do processes get put in place to kind of battle against, hey, we have new guys on the field or hey, we have new management or new staff? Is that kind of a thought of trying not to let performance, you know, kind of struggle with change? Yeah. Um, is that something that you constantly have to try to fight against? No, of course. Like there's, um, like trying to find innovative ways to actually get that performance out of place. Because if you, to be honest, if, like if a company sticks with the same business model for too long, the yeah. competitor is going to yeah. take over. So it's trying to find creative ways to actually increase your performance by finding better ways to do certain aspects of the game, um, finding better solutions for things you did wrong in the previous season. So always reviewing your, your, your seasons, but also being creative in the way you think and play to, to try and stimulate and try and get that performance up again. Because yeah. it does, in all sports, in all areas of life, it's, you get your eyes, which is amazing, but as, after that, there's always a dip. It's trying to minimize that dip and almost trying to get back up so, yeah, it's, it's just trying to be creative and actually always trying to push the envelope a little bit just to, to make sure that your, your performance always ticks over. Like, you don't get bored with, uh, with doing the same thing the whole time. You always try and stimulate and be creative. Why do you answer everything so well? I've got nothing to say now, though. <laughs> you can just go, yeah. 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 Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so, so with, yeah, 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 we'll go. Okay, so next question for you. So, and this is actually a perfect question for you. So every time, every time we watch a rugby game with friends or family and you come on the field, and I'm not saying this just to be like fancy. Firstly, all the women in the room are like, <laughs> it's Malcolm. <laughs> it happens all the time. The amount of people that messaged being like, is he going to be there on Friday? Yeah. Um, but secondly, all the guys, like our dad, all of your mates, my mates, as soon as Malcolm runs on the field, you see everyone's like, yeah, he come on. You know, there's just like such a physicality that you have within that position. So South Africa is obviously renowned for that physicality. So on you saying like, you're trying to change the game plan, you're trying to think of new ways of innovating the game, new strategy, does that, mix with the idea of South Africa being a very physical, hard team? Because I don't, and this is my limited knowledge, I don't see anyone in the world that can do it better than us. 
but I also don't ever see a need for us to need to change that style of rugby because it's who we are, right, as, as a rugby culture. So how do you innovate new ways of playing and new strategies while maintaining this like hardcore, well-renowned physical game of rugby? Um, yeah, the main thing is rugby is a physical sport. It is a contact sport. So, um, yeah, I think us just being physical and, and all of that is a smart way, but also tweaking small little things, you know, skill sets and breakdown of scrums, lineouts, I don't know, any, anything that you can think of the game, tweaking small things, but bringing the physicality side of it to it as well helps quite a bit. And I mean, everybody is, is getting better every single year. All the countries are getting better. Everybody comes with new ideas and all of that, that, that they think will work and, and all of that, which is awesome. And obviously it grows the game as well. Yeah. Um, so I, th I think just tweaking small things, um, but doing it in a physical way, if you could yeah. say it that way, okay. mm. um, is, is the way that we sort of operate. Uh, I don't know if you'd agree, could see if I've answered it the way you think. But I think that's a really good answer. Bring something new in, but have the South African like give no, so you, you never want to lose that the the, the physical side mm. of it yeah. um, not to say that other teams aren't physical like i mean there's other teams that are extremely physical as well like i mean oh. they're not playing at international level for nothing they mm. they're physical players as well but obviously it's something that south africa is renowned for um and something i think we we shouldn't lose like mm. that physical edge the physical edge like just being mm. And also what happens, like you're sitting on the bench for 40 minutes, you're watching the game and it's myself, Malcolm and Vincent Koch sitting next to each other. Yes. And there's also like a lot of ramping up, like a lot of psyching. <coughs> so when he runs on, there's, he sees red, like he goes boss yeah. and I mean, first three guys he, he meets on the pitch, he's just like, sorry man, I'm going to write, you. sorry yeah. man, I'm going to write you off. Yeah. But, uh, but he doesn't even say everybody. sorry afterwards. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's, but, uh, yeah. but it's everybody there. I think, I think <clears throat> what's cool is like, you sit, you sit there and like, we're not just talking shit on the side there. We're obviously talking about things that you actually seeing on the field and what we think, okay, okay well, we need to get this right, we need to get this right and not forgetting what the team plan is yeah. and, and, and what, like getting your job right and making sure that you, you're contributing in like a positive way, not, not like seeing red and, just going completely off plan and mm. tackling an oak without the ball or mm. shoulder charging a guy, like doing something dumb like that. But um, yeah, there's lots of chat between, like it's, it's not just us that, that chat, like everybody that's there, all, everybody's speaking, you can hear everybody's, okay, this, is, this is what we're seeing, like yeah. coming up with solutions and stuff yeah. so that when you get onto the field, you, like, you've been sitting on the outside, like you can see what's going on. Yeah. So um, speaking about it, trying to see if we can get every, like, if we're seeing the same thing, if we're all on the same page, seeing the, seeing the same thing, what needs to, what we need to do or what we need to change. Or. And you, can you pick up from the sideline, if you're looking at opposition and you've got all their players, can you pick up that guy's pissed off and he's going a bit hard, that guy's op leaving a gap open, that guy's like whatever the terminology is, can you pick up on that from the side of like that guy's trying to hurt Fuff or whatever, that guy's aiming, can you see that on the on the on the sideline and then kind of step into position to kind of change that element of the game? Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think when it comes to to the role, the, your role in job description on the bench is not just to your replacement for a guy who gets tired, but it's it's trying to find solutions. As you said, like if we see space open up certain areas, the guys on the field might not be able to see it, so there will be a message from the top. We see it, so when we go on, we know okay their scrum is struggling, or they, they slow to the breakdown. So now there's an opportunity for Malcolm to go for a turnover because they react, their reactive reaction to the wards of breakdown is, is dropping. Yeah. Or there's like a certain trend in the game. So you can pick it up and then you know what your job is for the next 30, 35 minutes when you're mm. on the pitch. Now you know, okay, cool. They, they, these are cool are areas where I can target to make an influence on the game. And that's, I mean, I'm kind of jumping the gun, but that's kind of where Bomb Squad as a idea kind of bred from, right? Was that like super sub change the game by bringing the Bomb Squad in? Is that where it? Um, like obviously the Bomb Squad started, it was 2019. 
and it's just a name that it was given to the guys that were that were on the bench. But um, it's not obviously you want to have an influence on the game, and like I said before, you don't you want to have an influence, but you don't want to go away from what what the plan is and and what you're trying to achieve. So have a positive impact instead mm. of a negative impact on the game mm. and stuff. And obviously myself and Katie love beer, so. Kind of and we maybe. were yeah. and we were part of the bomb squad, so yeah. it was just something that we we've 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 always referred to Vincent as Mr. Incredible. Yeah. Is that a known thing? Yeah. Oh, sick! Because we had like, remember at home. Our whole life we've been we've always just been like it's Mr. Incredible running on. We had no idea. Is that like his actual mm. nickname now? Um, it's Vinny, but it's Vinny, but yeah. Name is Mr. A lot yeah. of people say he looks like Mr. Incredible. So. I feel so much better about this now that we oh. nailed it. Yeah, we used to be like Mr. Incredible's running on. Um, what a champion! We got to we got to have him on some stage as well. Oh, He'll love it. He's yeah. funny. Oh, he's <laughs> yeah. He seems like a good oak. Yeah. Um, you might want to interview you. Like it will be, like you'll start asking all the questions. Oh really? One thing he can do, he can talk. He can talk. Yeah. Oh lekker! That'd be so much fun. I'll answer questions. I don't know what there is to ask me about, but like, I'm, yeah, I'm keen. Um, Simple question. Do you think your friendship and understanding of each other has helped your performance on the field? 100%. Yeah, I agree. Easy one. Yeah, we're continuously <laughs> talking and like, I mean, like he says, like you're on the field, you're talking about rugby and all of that. You're in, we're in the room. He's sitting there, he's written his notes down. He's busy doing it on his, yeah. on his, on his iPad, making sure he's reading over it again. I've written my like it's continuous talks. Okay, uh, so on the side of the field, you're talking to each other, reminding each other yeah. about certain things. Yeah. Like, I mean, he'll sometimes say, or we'll say to each other, yeah, we're not going to be slap cut. We're going to have to work. Yeah. Oh, so like it's continuous, and I think mm. it has helped us. 100%. Yeah, that communication that an open mm. like your guys just probably have like open communication as well you know like my mates and I it's always like you know don't be a doer and yeah. your mate saying that you're like oh, okay cool good point the strange is different you know yeah. stranger gets a flatty yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know you can kind of call each other out within a safe space mm-hmm. as well just checking are you fine on time and camera thank you so much um, your favorite rugby moment um, there's an obvious answer yeah is it is it the one that we think it is for both you guys yeah yeah winning the rugby world cup yeah uh, favorite international team to play against? Um, yeah, you want some. Yeah, so mine's probably New Zealand. Like I've, uh, New Zealand was the first test I actually started for the box. So that was a that was a proper game we played in in Cape Town. Um, unfortunately, lost the game, but it was probably one, one of my favorite games in a, a Springbok jersey. I think you you also started that game. The one at Newlands. Newlands, yeah. Yes. So yep. the two of us played. Um, I think we sh- we shared the the man of the match thing oh, after the game. The, yeah, it was probably that one was of my good. favorite favorite games. Unfortunately, we lost it, but it was just like how that game played out. About one point. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it was probably the most physical, quickest game of rugby I've ever played, and um, I think the involvement in that game or boarding players probably over 40 minutes. It was quick, it was hectic, it was fast. So that's probably, and always like playing against New Zealand, like they're renowned for being the best in the world yeah. um, at what they do. And it's always just such a fun, exhilarating, um, hyped up game. And yes, I love it, yeah. Your? And England. No, I also love playing England. You like playing England? Yeah. I don't know if. We can cut this if I can't say it. Can I ask what is the least favorite team to play? Yeah. Is that like, <laughs> are, you, are you allowed to answer that kind of thing? Because I can cut it if you don't want to. No, you can. No, I'll answer it's one. Um, are you talking about in terms of like not liking them or like um, f- physically or? In terms of like what is the most politically correct kind of answer? Of, so, so, like, so like let's go, because the last time actually when we spoke last season, we mentioned of when traveling to Argentina, it's quite a hectic environment to kind of play in. Yeah. I guess in terms of that, like, you know, when I dislocated my shoulder as well, we also had a lecker chat at, at, at Village about like going overseas and certain 
people will challenge you in public or make silly comments or kind of thing like just for you as an individual what what's like the least favorite place to go to be like cool i got to play rugby kind of i know i don't know my answer i don't know if you'll be the same man where did we play argentina that salta salta i think salta. he had the same answer salta. last last season yeah yeah, tough to go there. Yes, Salta's. It's very tough to it's, go there. It's, it's like the battle of the earth. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the awesome people, like, I love, I love the Argentinians. They're amazing. But it is, it is... You can send me a WhatsApp later and tell me if you want me to take that out or not. That's brilliant. Why do you mean about it? It's crazy, man. With me? <laughs> yeah, you, you no, yeah, yeah. said it. You can't ask me. I think I've made it public before, but like it's. Like I think Argentina. there's not much going on there. And it's like, yeah, it's industrial, it's. Mm. It's, it's like you can't, like you go there for a week and you literally spend 90% of your time in your hotel room. Like, really? Or in the casino. But like it's. Oh, yeah, the hotel's got a casino. Too. Yeah, but it's not, it's. I mean, Buenos Aires is amazing. Mm. Like it's. Yeah. Yeah. There's awesome restaurants, there's people of IB, it's, it's an awesome nightlife. But then Salta is completely different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more quiet. Right? Yeah. So Buenos Aires sounds like Cape Town, and Salta sounds like Joburg. Do you like don't Kimber have salt Joburg like that? More like, more like Kimberley. Yeah, Joburg's yes, it's difficult, eh? I've 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 found love for Joburg, and I we actually realised this. So my family moved to Joburg when I was younger. We lived there for a year, and it was a really hard year. So. Our understanding of Joburg is we were living in Midrand. I, 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 I didn't get into the school I wanted to get into, I went, so I went to a farm school. So it was just a strange year. Um, but if I look at filming Lioness and filming a whole bunch of projects, all of them have been in Joburg. And they've all been, we've stayed in Rosebank, and Rosebank is stunning. Yeah. Um, Joburg people are the best people in South Africa. I'm, I stand by that. Joburg people are the funnest. Joburg and Pretoria people are such lekker people but Joburg CBD like Joburg City no no, no I don't go to Joburg CBD yeah, okay. yeah. 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 that's a bit rough yeah, yeah. <laughs> no no, no. I'll, I'll stay far away from there as well yeah you you from Joburg yeah where in Joburg where do I stay no no like where, where are you from from like where's your like home base in Alberton south Alberton. South, south of Joburg yeah. it's a lekker there yeah. oh there you go there you go what's that guy's name Scully Clean cut Scully, he's like clean cut Scully. Oh, uh, is he from that side as well? <laughs> no, he's like similar. Like I've seen, I've seen that guy's videos. He does like dip dish club and all that, that kind of stuff, right? So yeah. Mal Malky can't, Malky can't buy a car and just leave it as it is. There's always like a really? new. That's like him. He put an exhaust on his Audi and then a flow through wada wada and then a fan wada wada and I was like. Yeah, it's a, he'd, he'd, he'd start his car every morning and it's when like Tom's going to work. Yeah, he knows yeah, everything. No, nah, he's probably right. I can't leave a, but it's a story time. Really? It's story time. You can tell it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, story it's, time. No, I don't know why. It's just I think I've always I don't know, been like it. Like it doesn't matter. Whenever I get a car, I always want to do something else to it. Like make it look yeah. different from yeah. everybody else's. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think I've left one car that I've had stock stand. There's always something going on that thing that's different. What is your, like, what's your go-to car off the, like, like right now? Yeah, what are you enjoying? Uh, uh, Toyota Land Cruiser I've got. Oh, and you did that up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's not crazy. Like, I mean, I think I can do a bit more to it, but... <laughs> It's probably not going to be worth it to do it. Like how's, the, how's, the, how's the wife on all the car mods? Is she do your thing? She makes it stop at that car. Really? Loves very quickly. <laughs> Sometimes like a lunatic as well. Um, but yeah, the only thing she compla complains about is the suspension. It's a bit too hard for her to get into the car. Okay. Oh, you've um, lifted it? Yeah, it's lifted a little bit and it's got these tires and all that shit. But, yeah, she just says, you know, the suspension, if you sit in the back, they're always bouncing and all this shit, and <laughs> I can't get in the car. Oh, um, yeah, there's, yeah, so she's always complaining about But something. you look lacquer when you drive it, so it's worth it. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah, there you go. So if, if you know cars, 
I imagine you get screwed over so less than the rest of people. Like, if you know your own vehicle, I clearly know nothing. So no, I, don't know, know nothing. I don't know much about the motors and all of that sort of stuff. I just want to... Aesthetics. Yeah. The aesthetics of the car. Yeah, there you oh. go. Okay. Okay, fair. Um. Oh, would you rather be given 10 million or win another World Cup? Win another World Cup. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, because 10 million will come after. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. 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 Well done. Yeah, you can have both. If you had to pick a player from the team to be stranded on an island with, who would you pick? Oh, choose Malky. Malky, okay, wait, let's take Malky out the equation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, who would have the skills? I've got that Oh, the skills. Um, yeah, it's a. Uh, I think survive on the island. Yeah. Survive on the island. Yeah. Quacha? I was going to say Quacha. Well. Quacha or Peter, Peter Steff? Thomas okay. Toy. Thomas. Is it fair for me to say all the Afrikaans people? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They got all the skills to do that kind of thing. Yeah, they know exactly what to do. Mm. If you had to swap positions with another player on the team, you get their abilities and talents. Yeah. Who would you swap with? Uh, it's an easy one for me, this. Can I go? You go. So if I keep my body and my size, but I get Cheslin's abilities. Oh my I'll word. I'll probably be the best player in the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> imagine, imagine, imagine he moves like, like Chesley. Yes. Done. One man squad, yeah. Hmm. I didn't think of that. Eh? I didn't think of your answer. I was going to say, Maybe uh, like pulley skills. Mm. I was going to say pulley, yeah. Mm. Andre pull out. Yeah. yeah, good call. Best friend tester. So you answer for him and you answer for him, right? Yeah. If you weren't a rugby player, what would, you, what would his dream job be? Could teach himself. Yeah. It's something this morning as well. <laughs> days. Um, it's either something in property, or he said that he's going to do. Um, what he said this morning was he's going to work no. because he's going to work because when he has off, he drinks too much. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to work night and far, and then he's like. I'm going to work for Bob Scott, work 9 to 5, but I'm going to play in golf days and all of this shit. But what happens at golf days, you end up drinking. You end up drinking, yeah. So, yeah. It's property or working for Bomb Squad. Mm. Good obviously, Bomb Squad now, because it's like obviously it's just been mm. just yeah. opening and stuff. Yeah. But he did, I have chatted to him about property quite a bit. Yeah. I okay. hope I'm right. But. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, Melk as well is probably. Get it, staying involved with Bomb Squad and almost, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's difficult. Like your interests change so much over the years, but I think uh, we got something special now. So just trying to stay involved and just make the brand grow. Yeah, both working. I mean, geez, that was actually quite an easy answer to say. Kind of just like graft yeah. in Bomb Squad. Yeah. No, I just remember what he said in the car this morning, which was <laughs> priceless. I'm going to work 9 to 5 because you know, when I'm off from rugby, I just drink so much. <laughs> That's just bubble. That's, That's living the life, right? Let's be honest. When you want to chill, chill. Yeah? Uh, what is his go-to cheat meal? I don't think there's necessarily a diet involved, but I do know what his favorite food is. Okay. Ribs. Ribs, straight up. Easy call. Ribs, yeah. And for Malcolm? Oh, yeah. It's ribs. Yeah. Um, All right, Ames. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Melky is a uh, uh, loves Italian like pasta. So just like a quick story, like so he landed on Wednesday evening at ten o'clock or off past ten, and um, the only thing he asked for from Woolies was a kg of lasagna. <laughs> so he just slaughtered that whole lasagna. The whole thing. Yeah, the kilogram lasagna. Yeah. The whole kilo. Yeah. That's like it's a family pack. Yeah. <laughs> I had it, I, yeah, well, I did, tell, I did say to Kitsy, like, when I dropped my, my wife and my daughter at the airport in the morning, I had breakfast with them. Don't come up with excuses, man. And I hadn't eaten the whole day. Oh, that's, that's the only reason why, eh? 
Not really, but <laughs> no, but exactly. I'm trying to make an excuse but for like, it. Okay. Even like yesterday at the, when we were at the brewery, like you order like a burger and the burger is like big. And then afterwards he orders another beef nacho. <laughs> hey, hey, don't turn me under the bus. You had some of those beef nachos as well. How after many? you said you were full. I had like two little pieces of nacho. But it's still something. Yeah, it's still something. Still contributed to finishing, but yeah. It, Italians, your... Yeah, 100%. My favorite yeah. is um, like bolognese, but mm. with, with pepper. Oh, yes. But then like I, yes. I love cheese, so then I'll mm. like ask the oat to bring me like a bowl of mozzarella on the side and I chuck that whole thing in there. Yeah. And then I'll throw actually, parmesan. I'll so next, before the, uh, the, the wallaby test, the Friday night, I'm going to send you a photo. Yeah. I'm going to take a photo of Malky's plate. And Vinny's. And Vinny's plate of food. Oh, Vincent's, really? Vincent's even worse. Like, it looks like a buffet. Like really? If, if, the pla if the plate's this big, for instance, like, it's a mountain of pasta, like, probably this high. And then it's like, you eat like chows a bit more sauce, then he goes like one spoon of sauce, but then cheese. Yeah, when we walk into, when we walk into like the, the dining hall, we go, to yeah. the, we go to the first person that we see that, that works at, at the hotel and we say, can we please have a big bowl of cheese, grated cheese. Just cheese. Yeah. And then she brings like a bowl and me and Vinny are just chucking all cheese. cheese yeah. and it does kind of make a pasta though. Yeah, it does. It's good. So Jess's mom makes a spaghetti cheese. So they make like a spaghetti covered in cheese and they bake it. Ooh. Oh my word. I have to, I'll, I'll get it and make for you. I'll get it, I, I, I will bring one down from Nisner. It's so good. Um, who is most likely to confess to a crime? Gutsy, 100%. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, just, what's that thing like you, like anxiety and that guilt? When, I think I'm maybe the same though. Yeah. I'm Guilty not, conscience. Guilty conscience. Yeah. Like worries. Worries. Like a biggest. Black wolf sitting here next to me. Yeah. He's not here today, but like he does. He make was here this morning. <laughs> His face. <laughs> yeah. And a brisky. Amy, you can say hi on camera. No. Okay. When are we having you on the show? Yeah. We'll make a plan sometime. We need to get like all the wives together yeah. for an episode. Okay. Is, on, is it lost here? That's done. You finished it. Ames, I think you, Manay, and Kirsten need to come sit on this. Yeah. Oh. oh no 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 no! Give me that. Okay. No, I've got what? We'll get like wine. We'll get a yes. charcuterie board. All you see is wife's favorite things now. One wine and cheese. cheese. Oh, there we go. Nailed it. We'll get everything laid out for you guys. That'd be amazing. Uh, Ethan, um, camera, your favorite. Who is the hardest to put up with on tour? Uh, yes, he's probably gonna kill me for this, but. Fuff, he's probably like the most difficult person I've ever... Like he can be such a legend, but he can also be so difficult at the same time. Really? <laughs> <laughs> we love him, I love him to bits, like I would do anything for Fuff. Oh yeah. uh, really, is he the most diva out of... He's a little diva. He has gorgeous hair. the same because he... Hey? He just does not stop giving like... It can be the fourth week of tour and you're like, yes, bro, I just want to keep mm -hmm. and you'll give you shit. Who? Faf. Yeah. You both agree on Faf? Yeah. I, lo I, so like, I genuinely love him to bits. He's like, he's a great guy and everything. Yeah. But I love, yes, I love it. Our full ball in golf is myself and Malcolm versus Faf and Vincent. So, okay. So if golf is not and going... That's another reason why I said it as well. Yeah. Because of so golf. If, if their golf... Oh, is that where it... Yeah, if their golf's not going well and me and Malcolm's winning, then they stop playing golf and they start talking. But then they give us shit on absolutely everything. If we're playing too slow, if we... Why, why are you taking 400 practice with you? Yeah. Why are you doing this? Why yeah. are you doing this? Oh, and so this is like a golf. You, they'll mock the way that you stand yeah. or something so that they can mentally take you off. Trying to get the advantage yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they laugh. And yeah. that's... If you play a bad shot, they laugh. You're like... Yeah. Trying, to, trying to mentally that's, win you that's over. That's the main reason. Yeah. Mm. I think everybody's to their own as well. Like, I mean, I think if you just need a bit of, like if things are getting a bit much and stuff like that, you've obviously got your roommate that you relax with and all of that in the room, but there are ways to break away from it and just mm. do your own thing. You know, like I'm gonna go have coffee or I'm gonna go walk in the mall or something, I don't know. 
there are ways to break away from it yeah. too. Yeah. So that you. Let's have you here. Oh, this is a good one. Okay. So who, I think firstly out of the two of you, we can go the Springbok squad as well. Who's most likely to survive the Hunger Games? Between two of us. Between the two of you. Nah, probably Melky. I think he's more athletic than me. <laughs> well, it could be... You can run away quicker. I'm yeah, but you could... A gorilla strength. I don't know, like, he's probably the strongest guy I've ever met in my life. Like. Really? What do you bench? <sighs> no, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't done it for so When do you squat? We, we actually don't squat. We, when we do lower body, it's more leg press and stuff. What do you leg press? Like you've got to put the team on it. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. His legs are stronger than mine, though. Really? Because that was one of our questions was like, who's the strongest? It had to be a question. He's under, he's saying he's stronger than me. Really? But now he's being modest. You're actually such, you can be a nice guy sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. No, he's, he's genuinely stronger than me. So, but that's why we train together because I'm trying to be stronger than him. I see you trying to be stronger, but you've got this, you faster than him. So one's faster, one's stronger. I'm not really that quick either, bro. I'm like top, a, top, a top end, probably. Top like, end, like off the mark. when the diesel motor starts. Yeah. There's a lot of things that you need to take in consideration, like, like when we always judge each other, like, we get these, you train all these pods, like these GPS pods. Oh, that's cool. So, like, in, in training, we always go, like, who ran the fastest, like, who had the most high speed meters, like, it's always between the two of us and Vinny. Like and distance. And, yeah. this, and total distance covered in the training session. So we always push each other, like athletically. But like in the gym, the two of us mainly work out together. And then Vinny will sometimes join, but he also like joins for like one bench. And then he goes to use his own thing for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And we have little competitions about who can steal the most balls in games. Yeah. Always. Really? Yeah. yeah. Who can steal the most balls in games? Yeah, so like... And who's winning? Yeah, so, no, 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 we don't, we don't know, we don't know who, who's winning, but it's like, we'll say to each other, okay, oh, what's your target or what's your... Oh, I see, okay. Game? And then we'll try and get to that or whatever, but it's always, I think even besides the friendship, I think we, we also push each, like, I almost I said push by mistake. So <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Amy's, my mom, Amy's gonna punch me now. But no, we'll do a beep. No, the we need like a sound clip that's like every time you swear, we get like a bomb squad jingle and we keep that the whole way through. Sorry, complete yeah. side note, yeah. No, like we're continuously like pushing each other to get better. Like it's whether it's break after training as well, it's small extras. Okay, uh, Malky, are we gonna do this or what are we gonna do? Like small little things. So besides. Yeah, the friendship, we're always trying to get better Yeah. and push each other to get Yeah. So just like a, on a side note, like, Malky always throws lineouts, and I just showed him last week in Durban that I'm actually better, I'm more accurate than him when it comes to, to lineout. For lineouts? Oh, really? <laughs> I heard that he was, he has been practicing though, because when I first saw him do it, I was like, yo. Yeah, it's like Bad. a wobbly. But then now, I don't, you've been yeah, practicing there yeah. the storms or something because you can hit them. Is, it, is, it, is that something that like a certain position gets given to do? Or in my head, everyone lines up and goes, who's the best at this? No. I think it's a, the hooker roll. It's like part of it. It's just okay. a hooker roll, yeah. yeah. Anyone can literally throw into the line out, but yeah. it's the designated guys. 99% is the hooker, yeah. It's like the most... Uh, go, like the go-to image in my head of Malcolm on the field is as he walks to the line and the hand in the towel and he's drying off the ball. Yeah. Looks like Bismarck, eh? Yeah, 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 drying off the ball while looking onto the field. But you have the what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> that image when you get like Bismarck back in the day is... Malky, isn't that like exactly the same? Hey, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was well, the guy that helped me um, back in the day with throwing and all of that. That was actually the first time before I interviewed you. I saw you when you guys were in camp in 2015. I was there with one of the coaches and he helped me with it. He said, don't ever take a ball that's wet. Really? Always, that's why you'll always see me because 
obviously you got you sweating all the balls yeah maybe you get the ball from from the ball boy and it's maybe even laying on the ground and he hasn't dried it now you hold it and it slips or yeah uh, he's it's just one thing that stuck with me he always said to me always take a towel and always make sure your hands yeah you dry your hands and you dry the ball so that it feels yeah. the same every time every single time you throw yeah Shit, i didn't even know that there was like a thing behind it you know when you're practicing like you're training it's also like this towel you dry the yeah. ball you throw but like some like now in japan it was a bit different because some of the games like we played in hectic rain and stuff like that so like at captain's run you try not to dry the ball mm. in case like so like even if it's raining, you like if you hit the lolly and it falls on the floor, you try not to try it so that you can get used to that feeling. Of it. So you become accustomed to playing so in in, in wet weather. I mean, but it's yeah, obviously don't always get it right. It's yeah. not a, it, it's difficult, but there there must be like an entirely new style and way of thinking that you've been like accustomed to now by playing overseas. But it, it is a bit different. Um, but I think the level of rugby there is definitely high, and I, I think a lot of the world has a, has a perception that it's not the greatest league. Or yeah. like, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's not URC, it's not um, Heineken Cup or you know um, the European tournaments, but it, it's definitely a tough league. It's not no. No. like I mean, you there there are heaps of foreigners there as well, and. Um, the Japanese guys are getting better every single year, and yeah. you know, they're so quick. It, they're quick. They it, it, they run uh, they run a lot, yeah. and they're extremely fit and all of that. Yeah. It's, it's just the way that they are and the way that they operate. But it's yeah. something different. It's something different to what mm. you what you uh, or how you'd play in Europe or how you'd play um, in South Africa when we were used to, when we used to play Super Rugby and, and, and that. It's it's a different style, and yeah, I think it's. Yeah, it's good. It's competitive. It's competitive. It's not. I, I, yeah, my biggest thing is people say, "Oh no, he's playing in Japan. The league's easy." And this is. Is that is that something that you have to deal with in terms of like no, people like, saying that? And just you obviously see things that people say, "No, he plays in Japan. Obviously, the league's not as as good as Europe, and w which it probably isn't. It's not on URC level or um, Champions Cup and all of that sort of stuff. It's not on that. It's not on that level. But it's. Definitely not at the level that the people the, yeah. the people have or the perception that people have. Yeah. It's a lot higher than that. Because yeah. there's there's a lot of I follow a lot of accounts on TikTok and Instagram, whatever that do like rugby review and that kind of stuff, just to help me also better understand like behind the scenes of the sport. And within your position as hooker, there are so many different podcasts and shows that I listen to where most people rate you as the number one in the world at, at that position. And I'm saying I've literally listened to shows with people that don't like, for whatever reason, don't like the South African team, but they go, oh, and it's usually the guys within Bomb Squad that they're like, oh, okay, but I'd bring them into my like top 15. Um, so maybe you going into that league, as much as there's stuff you taking out of that league in terms of learning, people like yourself stepping in there, the amount of difference that you must be making in that league must be like monumental as well. Uh, I don't know, because there's so many internationals there as well. Okay. So like Barrett, Bowden Barrett's been there. Um, Sean McMahon's at yeah. Centauri. Uh, Karevi's there. Uh, Israel Falau plays yeah. there. Um, there's a lot of Peter Steffs there, Villy's yeah, there, Fox yeah. there, Jesse's there. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of internationals from di from different countries that yeah. come there, and I think it obviously makes the squad stronger, but it makes the level of rugby grow every single year, if you could say it that way. But yeah. and the Japanese learn off of that as well. Yeah. We learn from them, and they learn from us. Like it, it's not yeah. just yeah. we go there and they learn from us. We there's some things that they do that are yeah. need to work on as well, and yeah. like it's. It's not just going there and you think you... You oh, hot shit or anything. Yeah, no, but it's also great because you can now implement that into the SA squad, right? Everything that you learn. Yeah, there are small things that, that you pick up and things that you think might work. But obviously at the end of the day, the coaches will have, will have the say and what they think will work and why, they, why we do certain things. But yeah. there are things there that I've learned and I was like, well, this, it works. So, yeah. 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 It's good.
you must be so stoked to all be coming back together again into SA camp and squad training and everything. It's a great time of year to kind of step back into that. You guys start squad training this weekend, right? Or next next week? Sunday, Sunday we're Sunday, yeah. And then you're in that for like a four week period, right? I think it was four weeks? Three, three week training camp and then the first test is Is it in the 7th or the 8th of July? July, yeah. That July. first, that first, yeah, week, the in first week in July. And then you've got the uh, Argentina games, Australia game, New Zealand game. Australia, New Zealand away, Argentina at home, Argentina away. That's a, yeah. Yeah. That's a, a schedule, yeah. Okay, sweet. Yeah. Okay. I want to wrap up with one more thing before you guys head out. I want to do a relationship tester of the men and their wives. So our final little thing to kind of play is a relationship tester of how well do you know your wife, right? So Amy is behind camera. Amy knows Malcolm's wife very well, right? Like good mates. So if he answers a question, you can kind of like thumbs up or thumbs down as to how on point he is about it or not. Okay. And then Some she questions. does for me as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't we like get it to leave and then maybe comment <laughs> afterwards? I will come back in two days. Yeah. The, well, when well, the podcast is out. Yeah. 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 When you see the episode come out, you'll be like, oh, yes. Yes to everything. Then everyone wins. Okay. <laughs> because now it's pressure. It is pressure now. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. It's like six questions. Quick round. What is your wife's favorite meal? You can't say yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can start. <laughs> you cook. Kirsten, all her favorite food is seafood. Spot on. One for one. Um, I reckon Amy's favorite like item, yeah. which she always orders when it's available, is burrata. Yeah. Spot on. What is what on earth is burrata? Yeah, what's that? I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I don't even know. She just goes, oh, burrata. And then she asks the waiter, how's the burrata? And then it's like, no, it's good. And it's like, yeah, I can have one. It's like a cheese ball with like goo inside. I don't know. Like that soft Italian cheese ball and you slice open and like the cheese. Oh. And it's a tomato. And That's good. Oh, I'm in, eh? Because you don't, to be honest, you don't have like a favorite meal. It changes. It changes all the time. She'll have... She'll, okay. she'll go through a phase where she loves burgers and then she'll go through a phase where she eats pork belly and then she goes like, it changes the whole time. Okay. So she never like has a set thing, but like burrata, if it's on the menu and it's nice and it's famous for that burrata, then she'll have it. How's that answer? Hey, 10 out of 10. Jeez, both one for one on the, on the, on the, on the, on the year. That's a straight thumbs up. Uh... What is your wife's favorite place to eat? Reason I put that on there is because you travel the world. So you can go favorite place in terms of a exact restaurant, a country, or a style of food. You're gonna go first, yeah? I'll, I've got a couple of minutes to think. <laughs> so I think Amy, um, so I think her best culinary experience was probably that, that time you spent in Bordeaux. Okay. Um, Food and wine. It's a pretty good answer. It's a typical one between that and Greece. Uh, and Greece, sorry, Greece. Oh, well, yeah. I spent one, one trip with her in Greece, but she's been there back a couple of times, so she loves Greek, Greek style food. So, but, but the food in Bordeaux. Yeah, right on the answer. Well, yeah, no, two for two. Actually better than my answer. favorite restaurant, well, I'm going to go South Africa, yeah, is Marble. Oh. Yeah, that's good. That's like, yeah, that's proper, proper. Spot on. Two for two as well. Oh my word. I should have made these questions harder. Um, your wife's favorite drink. So this can be you out in a restaurant or you at home and she goes, babe, make my drink for me. What's that drink? Apple for Kirsten. Apple for Amy. I'm squad lager. What problem do I have? Oh. Tequila problem. No. <laughs> yeah. oh. no, no. <laughs> tequila problem. So, um, oh, sorry, it's my bad. She's a rosé. Lavinia rosé or whispering prop. Te prop tears. Have you heard of that? No. Statement? No, what's that? It's coming soon. Watch the space. <laughs> prop tears, there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Joking, no. Uh, what's it? Lavinia? Yeah, it's probably my favorite. 
Yeah. Rosé. Rosé. But his answer before was still on. The rosé just comes just before tequila and Aperol. No, that's wrong. It's, it's wrong from us. Is that wrong? Okay. I forgot she has a rosé problem. Oh, rosé problem. She's got a rosé problem. A rosé problem, yeah. Which is a life solution. So, like, it yeah. depends how you look at it, yeah. And Aperol. Cursing's, cursing, cursing. Can we say three for three, two for three? Yeah. Okay. I'll find a prize for this in the end. I don't know what the prize will be. We'll talk about a prize, yeah. We'll find something. Uh, what is your wife's pet peeve? Um, you can't say yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it's has to do with me though. But um, it happened yesterday. Is when she confronts me on something and I don't say sorry. If I'm wrong and I don't say sorry immediately, that's a, my, my biggest pet peeve. Yeah. If you try to like what, like swindle your way out, trying to come up with excuses yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you just want a dead honest. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Respect that. My last one is chewing. Really? That's meso. She meso. throws rage. I promise you. She, like, if I chew a chewing gum next to her and she's here, she'll say to me, please go chew somewhere else. Or like, she, she doesn't like, I, I don't know if it's the sound or whatever. She just doesn't like yeah. that chewing. It's a, it's a, I don't want to say disorder, but it's like a characteristic that yeah, Jess and I both have it. Misophobia or something like that. It's the sound of chewing. The difficult thing is my girlfriend and I both have it. So every dinner we put so music on, yeah. but we watch a show or something or. Um, yeah. I, that's mine as well. Like, really? I can't handle it. Like I always have to, either music or TV must be in the background. Yeah, but something drowning out the sound of just food being consumed. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is your wife's favorite country to visit? We actually kind of just touched on this, but... Greece. Greece. Yes. Yeah? Three for four. Oh. But another one. Just... And France, yeah. Yeah, France is... Like, Europe in general. Okay. Why, why France? We lived there for two years. We lived in Bordeaux for two years. Okay, so... And my best friends still live there. Okay. I just love okay. the language, the I love the French. So French. Like house on fire. Yeah, so there you have like your own life and space, but Greece is more like a holiday, fun kind of visit. Yeah. Okay, I see. I see. I'm gonna say Kirsten's is Greece as well, eh? She's been. She's been with her, her Greek friends, yeah. yeah. I think it is Greece as well. I think so too. Yeah. You think so too? He's got everything right. He's got everything right. She is. Dude, oh, hats off. I want to get black and then I get back to the yeah. car. <laughs> I know a coffee or no, it's not lattes. Anymore. It's either Americano with hot milk or it's um, a cappuccino with almond milk. What almond milk brand does she Milk Lab. Sure. <clears throat> How fast was he there? She only drinks one almond milk. I feel like the wives run a very tight ship. Tight ship, yeah. 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 I keep you guys very in check. It's like this, not from rugby. Yeah. From Amy mooring with the wooden ruler. The wooden spoon, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time you put your hand on the table, smack. Just double checking. Say sorry immediately. Yeah. Um, what? What is your wife's favorite thing about being married to a rugby player? Uh, none. None. No. Not even travel. Not yeah, even like, like the travel, but so the, the problem with like travel is like she she enjoys visiting the countries we mm. like, especially end of year tour, like when in Europe. But to be honest, like eighty percent of the week we busy. Like yeah. we maybe get an afternoon here or can maybe go for dinner. But I'm so tired. Like it's not really fun for her as well. But um, I think rugby's taken a lot of our time together away from us, but, and Malk is even worse because he's in Japan most of the year, but uh, it takes a lot of like family time away. I see, I see. Same for you? I, I, I think the travel, sh I think my wife enjoys the travel side of it, like experiencing different cultures and stuff, but like she says, it does, because of the travel, it does take a lot of time away from, from family time and all of that. Um, but yeah, I'd say probably the travel 
Yeah, probably. You get to experience different stuff and see different cultures, different yeah. countries and stuff, I think. Um, I'd say actually, no, my number one thing is we get to meet these people. Mm. It's the people that we get to meet his wife, Faf and Manet's wife, his wife, their wives have become the only people that understand is what we go through is each other's wives. I I'm see. Phone them. I see. They're the only people that understand what I'm going through. So that's the most special thing is the friends that we've got in our yeah, I think that's the number one. Yeah. And the, the, their friendships is very special to get out of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's 100% the number one thing. That it, it is something that like is really cool to see is all the wives getting along and everything like yeah. it's really special to have that. Um, final question: Who who is your wives' favorite player on the Springbok squad other than yourself? Like her favorite player? Yeah, yeah. yeah other than you? That's probably Melky. Melky. If you get this right, you've gotten every single question right. I don't think I'm going to get this right. Yo. I actually don't know, Ames. Do you know the answer to this? I, I, I think she would say... I think I know somebody that she's very fond of. Yes, I would say that might be... I'd hope... Uh, I know she likes the way that you... You play and how you are and stuff. I'm gonna say Kitsi as well then. Okay. But I don't know if I don't know we'll I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. I think she also really loves Jesse. Yeah, Jesse. Yeah, she does get along. Guy. Yeah, she does get along well with Jesse. I don't know if the Oak's got a. Uh, I don't know if it's because he's got a 48 pack on his stomach <laughs> and his back and his legs and. It's just muscles, huh? Yeah. It's just muscles on muscles and it's veins everywhere and. Yeah. He definitely wanted to be a cloud one day. Please slack it. <laughs> I said I could be anything, I chose to be a cloud, yeah. I extract. Jeez. No, he is, eh? Train's hard, though. Yeah, he works Train's very, very, hard. very hard. Okay, so we'll stick on that. We'll stick on each other yeah. being the wives' favorite player, and we'll put Jesse Creel in there as well, and we'll see. Yeah. So you could be six for six. I think you five and a half for six. Yeah, yeah I fucked that one up. Yeah, no, it was, it was a good answer, though. <laughs> I fucked that one up. Sweet, man, but thank you guys. This was so much oh, fun. Oh, thanks, anything Jesse. you guys want to announce, launch, or push forward with Bomb Squad, obviously the show will now be a representative for you guys, for Bomb Squad. We'll brand everything. You guys will see very soon. Um, but is there anything you guys want to put forward for Bomb Squad? What's coming? Yeah, I think just to put it out there, like from probably the 20th of June, there will be a big rollout of cans, so it'll be available. Um, yeah available in stores and, and online so yeah watch the space sick i think we'll obviously i think ames will probably roll out where they will be specifically as well okay um so that like i mean yeah we can say we can say um yeah it'll be in stores but yeah. a bit more yeah. specific ames will probably yeah. roll out which stores it's in and yeah. all of that jazz as well okay. yeah all, all the info will be on the on the socials on bomb squad socials yeah. so sick. yeah so Follow the socials. It's just Bomb Squad on Insta. Bomb Squad, Bomb beer. Squad beer. Bomb Squad Beer across Instagram, everything else. Go follow it. I'll share it as well. They'll share it across their platforms as well. So it will be in the bios of all of these story time socials. You'll see it on YouTube, on TikTok, and on Instagram. You'll be able to go into the bio, click on Bomb Squad Beer, and you'll be able to follow everything happening from there. So 20th of June. Stay tuned for that happening. The cans will officially be available for everyone that's been asking. Thank you guys so much for coming and this has been so much fun. Amy, thank you so much for arranging everything. You know, we love you so much. Tom, thank you so much for being here. Lekker, Oaks. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah, it's lekker. Sick, thank awesome. you. Thank you. Well done, boys. Well done, Oaks. Oh. Yeah, I like this type of thing. I don't, I don't do... You don't want to act. I don't want to act because I look like a doos when I act.